incredible resume that includes gold medals coaching Team USA. On the other side, head coach Wes Moore, his 11th season at NC State, has led this team to 10 straight weeks in the top 10 poll, AP top 10 poll, I should say, and off and running here in Raleigh, North Carolina. The World Pack that had the first opportunity to score. There's River Baldwin inside. Looks it up, tough take, batted back out. Second chance for the Wolfpack, touched out of play. They'll keep it here, though. Officials on the call today, Fatu Sissoko Stevens, Brian Brunette, and Timothy Bryant. NC State coming off two straight wins, including a huge one over a ranked Notre Dame team, held Notre Dame to their fewest home points. In about 20 years, Isis, just this defense, outstanding. Oh, it's stifling. So impressed with the way that Rivers, Hayes, and James guard together. They're all very long. They're all connected. That's a good sign, though, as Kayla Blackshear knocks down the 15-foot jump shot. And Coach Nell Fortner told us before the game she needs to knock down that elbow jump shot consistently for them to open up their offense. Blackshear the, has the ability to get to the cup, but she also has to be able to hit those shots to draw those defenders out, exactly what Coach Fortner pointed out to us. And she said there have been times where she passes up that shot, but you know she can knock it down, just has to be aggressive. NC State looking to respond. Four to shoot, rattles out. Second O-board, second chance points here on the board for NC State. And Madison Hayes is the best offensive rebounder on this team. You cannot forget to box her out. Hayes with the opening basket for the Wolfpack, averaging more than 12 points per game and six and a half boards. This North Carolina State team, but how about Dunn heating up? Love the way that Dunn is able to just score in a multitude of weights, whether it's the jump shot, getting to the basket, posting up. She's so versatile offensively. Response not online, and it's another rebound here for Georgia Tech. They get the opportunity to extend the lead. Dunn coming off that 24-point performance we pointed out in the open. 15 of those came in the fourth quarter. Talk about some clutch play for the Yellow Jackets as they battled back in that game against Clemson. A much-needed win for a team coming off of a couple of very tight one-possession losses. Some good ball movement here. Five to shoot, though. Elbow jumper is good. Kara done this time. Yeah, that's a good start for Georgia Tech. Three of three from the floor. They've all been open, catch and shoot jump shots in rhythm. And you mentioned that ball movement. That's key against no. Uh, excuse me. That's key against NC State defense. You have to move them to find open shots. And there is a basket from Isaiah James, the leading scorer for this Wolfpack team. Georgia Tech team, though, able to execute too late in the shot clock, and that's exactly what this North Carolina State defense wants to do, slow you down, grind out possessions. Nine to shoot here. The penetration, travel cult. Initially, travel indicated, but jump ball. Now it is the travel. Little discussion there between the officials. They're just deciding whether Johnson traveled first before the jump, and I agree. She took a few too many steps on the jump stop. Good call by the referee. Johnson mentioned it, earning her fifth start. Fifth year guard brings that veteran presence to this team. Coach Fortner said this is going to be a tough matchup for her, though, with the way this Wolfpack defense is playing. Nice pass. Rivers can't cash in. Whistle, though. Foul called. Great awareness by Rivers here to make that 45 cut right into the middle of the pane and then met with contact. And that's something that River Baldwin is so good at, is passing out of the post, right? She's got the size and the height advantage over Georgia Tech. Caleb Blackshear is an undersized post player, so River Baldwin has got a couple of inches on her and being able to pass out of the post. Such an awesome skill to have as a five player. Junior guard, Sanaya Rivers at the line. Just about a 74% free throw shooter. Knocks him down. NC State ties this game up. Baldwin, though, doing so much for this Wolfpack team. More than 10 points per game, nearly seven boards, 28 blocks, and then he pointed out the ability to distribute. Done. Trying to get inside. Caught up. Deflection and takeaway for the Wolfpack. 
Oh, what a pass. In the finish from Collins. Every single player runs the floor in transition for NC State. They are consistent about that, and there they're rewarded with easy two points. Tough thing about defending this North Carolina State team in transition, they've got so many scores. Six, seven different players have led them in scoring and rebounding this season. But the three ball is true from Dunn. Talk about Georgia Tech's hot shooting start now. Four of four from the field, and Dunn all by herself is three of three. Dunn continuing the hot play from that Clemson game. A three ball coming up short from Hayes. Battle for the rebound. Yellow Jackets come up with it. Morgan. Oh, what a tough finish. My goodness. First of all, that's such a tough move against Rivers, who comes right back down. Bit out of control, though, and Georgia Tech gets the ball back. But, man, Tony Morgan in transition. You don't want to miss it. Sophomore guard just having an outstanding second season. And this Georgia Tech team continuing their hot play. Hey, you got to be road warriors on the road. You got to take good shots and make good shots. It's a good start for the Yellow Jackets. Morgan averaging just under 15 points per game, seven boards, just under five assists as Baldwin responds. And that's a bit too easy against the zone. You get that ball into the high post and the different options open up. Baldwin on the block. Someone has to find a way to defend her and then defend that pass at the high post. Three-point ball game here. This Georgia Tech offense on fire. Can they put together defensive stops? Another three from Dunn. Kyla, we just started the game. We're only <laughs> six minutes in. Dunn already in double figures with ten. Kara Dunn shooting the lights out of the gym, and things just got started here in Raleigh. She has yet to miss a shot. Ball rolls out of play. Going to be a turnover here, but how about that? Tony Morgan, my goodness, Ice. The Yellow Jackets starting off strong. It's Tony Morgan on the reverse, baby. Yellow Jackets up six. This Friday. The magicians wear a strange bead. You might think they know every trick. Just when you think you've seen it all. That's an amazing presentation. But it's just absolutely perfect. An illusion. There is no doubt that you fool us. Penn and Teller fool us. This Friday at 8, 7 Central on The CW. The Bojangler from Bojangles. With the same bold flavor as their chicken? The same. The Bojangler's back. Order in the app to hook one while you can. It's bow time. <laughs> When you're out to the ball game, they might forget something, but you won't. And between good hits and great memories, they'll grow into grand slamming, show stopping, triple play superstars. So when you're gearing up for America's favorite pastime, cover your bases for less. Have fun out there. Roses are red, violets are blue. What's sweeter than chocolate? You! And driving away from Planet Kia and something new. Drive a new Kia for zero down, $2.59 a month. And 0% APR financing is available for up to 48 months. Plus, if you're worried about your credit, we have easy credit approval. Love is in the air at Planet Kia on Independence Boulevard right across from the big gold building. And I'll see you in the showroom. I'm Duke, and I know that finding the right home repair contractor isn't easy. In fact, sometimes it can be costly, which is why you need our free network of qualified contractors like this guy, who are insured, background checked, and performance reviewed. Plus, through our network, we routinely inspect the work to help make sure contractors meet our standards. So when you need to hire a home repair contractor, say, find it, Duke, and we'll find it for you. You're watching ACC Basketball on the CW, brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve. If you weren't up and at them yet on this Sunday, well, you should be now after watching the start to this basketball game. My goodness, sixth-ranked NC State hosting Georgia Tech. And it's the Yellow Jackets who are perfect from the field, in large part due to Caradon. And done already with 10 points. 
see the jump shooting ability from her. And this is what makes her so versatile is that you worry about her driving, but you also have to worry about her closing out and knocking down shots from the perimeter. She is a perfect 4-4 from the field. Two threes already. She averages 15 and already has 10. And we still have four minutes left to play in the first quarter. That's the wild thing about all of this. Dunn, top 10 in the ACC in scoring, coming off a huge performance, just carrying that momentum into today. Prior to that, had a tough game against Miami, just six points, went two of 14 from the floor, 0 of eight from three, but shooters shoot, and you gotta keep shooting with confidence. She's doing that. Shooters shoot. Talking about that, did you watch uh, Sabrina Inescu? <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. and James gets it inside. We love the Nike shirt as a result of it. Oh, yes. So shooters, shooters, shoot. Nike, saying it. Nike's been on it recently with their ads. They had a good one for Caitlin Clark, too, when she broke the record recently this this uh, earlier this week. And inside here are the Yellow Jackets. Quite the showdown between Ionescu and Curry on NBA All-Star Weekend. Really fun to watch her show out. 26 points in that three-point competition. From the NBA 3-2. I tell you what, though, jump shots are raining here for Georgia Tech. Blackshear knocks down another 15-footer. Now that last possession prior to that, the Yellow Jackets did miss a shot. So it's happened here in the first quarter, but they are still eight for nine. Blackshear getting in on the action from the mid-range. NC State down by six, needing a response here. The friendly roll for James. And James just has a nice pull-up jumper. So good at finding that space in between the defense where she can pull up comfortably. Speaking of players who are perfect from the floor, James three for three so far. Averages more than 15 points per game. Eight on the shot clock. Naredo trying to find something. Wow. Gets called for the carry. Turnover here for the Yellow Jackets. Their third so far here in this first quarter. One area that this NC State team has been able to capitalize on, though, is the offensive glass. Three O boards so far has only resulted in two second chance points, though. But this NC State team, a very good rebounding team, among the top in the ACC and the country. And again, they have just the size advantage against the Yellow Jackets, so it's important that they look to dominate. But also in the paint, they're doing a good job scoring. That's a nice pull-up from the freshman and Zoe Brooks. Listen, folks, if you haven't watched Zoe Brooks play this season, please watch. When we talk about the future of college basketball, Zoe Brooks is going to be one of those players we talk about for the next few years. Morgan gets inside, can't get it to go, gets her own board, draws the foul. Good play call here for Georgia Tech. Morgan was able to get free inside. Brooks called for her first foul. Following up a great move inside. She's a part of NC State's freshman class that is the highest ranked group of rookies in program history. Ranked as high as four by a couple of media outlets. She was the ninth ranked recruit according to popular recruiting sites. And you can certainly see why when you watch her play. So much fun. Oh, she's second on this team in assists, one behind. Ball out of play, a little bit of a disparity as to what the call would be. It is going to be Wolfpack basketball. Oh, yeah, it seemed to go off Dunn's knee there at the very end. But, yeah, talking about Zoe Brooks, just 90-plus assists on the season and Coach told us, Coach Westmore told us that sometimes he thinks that she gets more pleasure out of setting her teammates up than scoring herself. <laughs> and how about James getting inside? Remains perfect in this game. Now she's just so good off the bounce. James now with eight points to lead the Wolf Pack. They tie this game up here in quarter number one. Dunn gonna step out and survey, pulls up. Blackshear puts it on the deck, can't get the shot to go. I like the drive, though, because Blackshear, because she's undersized, she has a little bit more quicker foot speed right on Baldwin, so she can take her off the bounce, but she has to be able to finish inside. Hayes gets it to Baldwin. Minute to play. Corner three is short. Pushing here are the Yellow Jackets. Morgan. 
NC State team, though, doing a good job, really good at their transition defense. Tough basket from Dunn. And the connection sometimes between Morgan and Dunn is just exquisite. Like, they find each other at the exact moment and finish. And then as Rivers just gets an easy two points. If you're Georgia Tech, you got to make it a little bit harder in transition. You have to show some resistance. Tie ball game here at Reynolds Coliseum. Fans packed into the stands, and they sure are getting a show. Basket, 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 2020 here, late in quarter number one, and Kara Dunn remains perfect. Five of five from the floor. She leads all scores with 12 points. And this one going to come down to the wire. You have a feeling we're in for a good one. Yeah, both teams shooting a good percentage from the field. Georgia Tech starting off hot, 75% from the field. The Yellow Jackets are shooting. Dive into the nation's most shocking mysteries. Catch the series premiere of the all-new CW original True Crime series, Crime Nation, this Tuesday, February 20th at 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central, only on the CW. What do you think was the message in either of those huddles at this moment in time with the scoring display we've seen so far? I don't think Coach Nell Fortner looked too pleased with the transition defense for the Yellow Jackets. And then you just talk about taking a timeout here with less than 30 seconds left, just wanting to get a good shot to finish the quarter. About a four-second differential between the game clock and shot clock here. Yellow Jackets in possession. Ernie Morgan, the sophomore guard out of Tallahassee, Florida. Leading this team in rebounding, assists, steals. Calling out the offense. Deuce Denida into the game, prolific score. Freshman finds her shot, gets it to go! Talk about a clutch bucket from a freshman. She's so good. Coach Nell Fortner described her as a baller. Bruce Denida averaging 11 points per game. Last shot offline. Just two seconds were remaining to get that one off. But how about the scoring this goal? We just got to call both those teams. Uh, anything that you have your eye on in that matchup? Oh, man, I just think the inside presence. You talk about Elizabeth Kitley for Virginia Tech, one of the most versatile post players in the country, and then going up against Olivia Cochran, who had a really good showing in Syracuse besides the last second foul that was oh so controversial. Tell you what's not controversial? Georgia Tech shooting right now. My goodness, Kylan. I mean, it was Tony Morgan that time, but everyone has been getting in on the action. Four different scores so far, and they have been lighting it up, but there's the response from James. James, so good off the bounce. She just made Naredo do a full 360 and trying to guard her off the rip through. Such a quick first step. James now with 10 points. She's also five for five from the floor. So another player really starting off hot. They talk about her shot selection. I mean, she's had pull-up jump shots, which are it is her go-to. She's money in the mid-range. And then she's had layups at the basket. She's getting high percentage looks. Oh, how about the corner three from Dunn? I mean, Dunn with 15 points just a minute into the second quarter. Oh, and then Tony Morgan gets in the passing lane. I tell you what, the Yellow Jackets are here, folks. And Wes Moore needs a timeout. They are here, and they are forcing this North Carolina State team to have to regroup here. And Coach Wes Moore is going to have to figure something out to slow down these Jackets. Tony Morgan not slowing down, though, in the passing lane, finishing for the easy two. Yellow Jackets up eight. How many times have I felt this good? How many times have I felt this good? We're done. What about these? Looks right. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty absorbs spills like a sponge and is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. Dad, we're gonna be late. Oh. Can't stop adding stuff to your cart? Get the Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Card. Choose the online shopping category and earn 3% cash back. 
My name's Brian Heffler, and because of TikTok, I have the power to educate people and hopefully save lives. When my son Brian died in a drunk driving accident, I put out a video about it and try to stop the young people from drinking and driving. No other family has to go through what we did. TikTok has the power to change society, and I think that's where the power of TikTok lies. If you save one person, that's one more person that can change the world too, right? Shopping for drinks. The unexpected can happen to any of us. That's why Select Quote makes it easy to get the life insurance coverage you need to protect your family for less than a dollar a day. Now get up to a $2 million term life policy with no medical exam and same day coverage. Make sure your family is protected from the unexpected. Visit SelectQuote.com now. Select Quote. We shop, you save. You thought you knew Cuomo. See the game, my friends. Expose the game. The real Chris just might surprise you. So you can change the game. Surprising. The agenda is you. Free thinking. News Nation is the only news organization whose name is reflective of you. Game changing. America is News Nation. Cuomo, weeknights only on America's fastest growing cable news network, News Nation. To find News Nation, go to joinnn.com. ACC basketball in the CW is brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Tell you what, a lot of red here inside of Reynolds Coliseum as sixth ranked NC State hosts Georgia Tech, but also red is the Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket shooters. Red hot, I mean, my goodness, 81% from the field, 80% from beyond the arc, and this is a very stout North Carolina State defense. As Hayes gets it inside, can't get the roll. Yeah, Georgia Tech just doing a great job of shot selection. I think they've been getting great shots. Not good shots, but great shots in rhythm. And then six assists on 13 made field goals shows you that they're moving the basketball well. Two players who've been the hottest amongst this Yellow Jackets team. Morgan and Dunn combined for 24 points. 10 of 11 from the floor, 4 of 5 from three-point land. I mean, my goodness, shutting those two down might be a place to start. Well, you're seeing the adjustment early from Wes Moore. He's got Rivers guarding Morgan, Moore in the passing lane, so she didn't get a touch, really, on that possession. Their Naredo shot wouldn't go, so NC State with a chance to close the gap here. Battle for the O-board. Collins touched it last out of play. You look at the numbers for this NC State defense. Among the best in the country, they're holding opponents to 34.5% shooting from the floor. That's third in the NCAA, first in the ACC. But today, this Georgia Tech team just mentioned it shooting now 76%, but came out 7 of 7 from the field. I mean, it's tough to play defense when teams are scoring any way they want to. They're scoring from three. They knocked down four of those. They've also finished inside, but James has been so consistent for the Wolfpack on the steal. James, a great two-way player, gets it done defensively as Hayes shot rattles out. Battle for the O-board and foul called. This NC State team get, been getting after it on the glass, too. Well, you need second chance opportunities at this point, and you want to put more pressure on the paint. You want to stop Georgia Tech from rebounding and then flowing into their offense. And Mimi Collins just so good at not accepting the box out as she battled for the offensive board. Augustinaita called for her first on that play. So it was called on the ground. It will stay with NC State on the baseline. James, tough little fadeaway. Move off one foot. I'm sorry, that is too nice. James now with 12 points to lead the pack. Six of six from the field. Done. Some contact. Foul called. Boos from the crowd. They wanted the charge. James does get called for the foul. Oh, it was oh so close. I think though she was still moving and leaning to the left as Dunn went to initiate the contact. She had been a second earlier. She would have drawn the charge. James called for her first. Oh, Jackets bring it back out. Laredo gets it under control. Watch 
here. Seven to shoot here. Morgan rises up. Look back to get the board pushing. Here is Brooks. Wide open three for James. Won't go. She's human. She missed. Turns out. Yeah, I thought Starting she was going to gonna keep going. Man, <laughs> Coach Wes Moore has nicknamed her the show. And I can see why. She's she so composed in her ability to score multiple ways. And this is the footwork also that we've seen as well. Even on that last play off the one foot, just skillful. Big thing about it, Isaiah James, too, is the improvement. Second biggest improvement in the ACC in scoring. Jumping up about nine points per game last year. Now, however, in her sophomore campaign, started the last six games, averaged 10 points per game, more than four assists, nearly five boards and two steals. So really started to come along towards the end of the season and kept that going into this season as NC State gets the takeaway. Transition chance, Brooks couldn't get it under control. James got a bit excited there, trying to thread the needle. Good job by the Yellow Jackets in transition. But the defense, though, from the freshman and Brooks. Hayes. Corner three is true. James nails it, and the crowd goes wild. Just so many weapons for the number six team in the country. You think about Hayes, you think about James, you think about Rivers. And oh, don't forget, you have Baldwin inside and Collins. I mean, they're just stacked from top to bottom. Six different players have led NC State in scoring this season. James and Rivers each have 30-point performances. First time since 2010-2011. That has happened for the Wolfpack. Couple, couple of the last offensive possessions for Georgia Tech, a bit rushed. They're not getting those open shots now. They've shot some contested ones recently. Georgia Tech 0 for 4, their last couple times down the floor, a 340 scoring drought. They get another chance here, though, on the rebound. I think Collins could have worked a bit harder to get a better shot there. One dribble pull up, defense was still there. She could have worked a little harder to create something more for herself or for a teammate. Morgan surveying. Tough pass. Able to keep it. Calm it down a little bit. Some of the players are saying to each other right now. Morgan in traffic. Dorado got it! Coach Nell Porter just yelled to her team, yes! Because you can see that the offense now is starting to click. They're getting a piece of the paint. They're kicking it out to shooters. And most importantly, shooters are knocking down shots with confidence. Huge bucket this team needed. Approaching a nearly four-minute scoring drought. Yellow Jackets looking to keep the momentum and confidence going. Talked about James. We've seen her hit a number of mid-range shots, but she can also stroke it from the outside. And then on the other side, it's Naredo getting in on the three-point action. Good pass by Tony Morgan. Tony Morgan's always got some celebrations, too. you got to keep your eye on her. She's got a few celebrations that are always pretty good. Oh, always fun to watch. That last time down the floor, Aisha Won Adonis, uh, Adonis rather, gets called for the foul. That's her first. Coming in and providing some relief here as a couple players get a break for Georgia Tech after a very hot, sh stop, hot shooting start. They're 67% now from the field, so cooled off a little bit as we pointed out that scoring drought. And Collins goes to the line for two, makes the first. Hey, Georgia Tech still holding on to this lead, though. Well, and I'm, I'm impressed right now with just the way that they have had multiple players scoring the basketball. Dunn already with 15. You see Morgan now has nine. Black Shears chipped in four. But for NC State, it's been really James. James has 15 and everyone else, four points, two points. For Georgia Tech, find a way to stop James right now. Surprising for an NC State team that has five players averaging in double figures. Have so many quiet at this point. That's the one thing Coach Moore. Oh, how about the deep three? A goose denied us showing off her range. It's your worst fear as a player when the road team shoots better than you on your home court. You don't want that to happen. And right now, Georgia Tech is hot. Brooks brings in the O board. Second chance for Rivers. Comes up short. Good box out by Morgan and Dunn. Oh, but then they give it away. Trying to catch Johnson on the run. It's a bit too overzealous there from the sophomore and Tony Morgan. 
Taking it back, Joe, to the three by Augusta Nida. Look how deep that was, almost touching the logo. Not afraid to knock down three. He's talking about the celebration, too. Okay. Got a couple with a little bit of swag for the Yellow Jackets, but that's the kind of confidence you want to see from a team that's coming off of a big win, following a couple of tight losses. you got to just keep the faith in something that Coach Fortner talked about, was feeling like her team was getting good looks. They had good ball movement in a couple of those losses. They just couldn't get shots to fall, and it's hard when that happens to maintain the confidence and keep shooting those shots. That's what she's been encouraging her team to do. Yeah, especially with a young team, Kylan. I mean, we talk about the main players for Georgia Tech. Tony Morgan is a sophomore. Kayla Blackshear, a junior. Sydney Johnson is one of the actual seniors on this team, the fifth year. But Naredo, also a sophomore. And so is Dunn. You talk about their super sophomore group, and we've got young talent also scoring the basketball. Zoe Brooks hits a jumper. Brooks with a pair of made field goals in this matchup. She has four. Yellow Jackets team, though, really clicking on the other end. Notice how the defense has picked up for the Wolfpack. They weren't stepping outside the three-point line. They were playing a pack line, but now they started to put more pressure on the perimeter. Morgan, kick out. Augusta Nida, got it! Oh! Well, this Georgia Tech team making NC State honest. They've struggled from three in their last couple of outings as there's Baldwin with the answer. Good decision to get Baldwin a touch. She's been a bit quiet here, but when she's one-on-one -on -one in the post, especially a day like today, she should look to score and dominate with her size. 6-5 inside. Yellow Jackets really turning things around from beyond the arc. They shot just 21% from deep against Clemson, just over 18.5% in their prior game against Miami. And there's Blackshear with that little jumper that Coach wants her to keep taking. Oh, well, man, Tony Morgan did a great job of operating the screen. They tried to ice it and keep her on one side. Blackshear with the short roll and able to knock down that 15-footer. Tell you what, everything right now is going right for the Yellow Jackets, and they're starting to build a bit of a lead. I want to mention is Blackshear has six points now that Tony Morgan has seven assists. So you oh. talk about her ability not just to score but assist, set up her teammates. You pointed it out, can do a variety of things. Right now she's been the maestro for what's been a very hot Georgia Tech offense. Houston Ida makes the extra pass. Johnson offline. I thought Augusta Ida should have shot the ball. I thought she had a little bit more space in daylight. She should have shot the ball, but who else but Isaiah James getting through the lane and then drawing the contact? Houston Ida heating up as well. Now with eight points, three of three from the floor, two of two from beyond the arc. And one of those you pointed out, raising the logo. Also has a board here in this one. Well, I thought in watching their last game versus Clemson, she did a great job of just checking into the basketball game and looking to shoot. She picks her spots well, not afraid to put the ball in the basket. Had 14 in their last game versus Clemson. Morgan called for the foul in this last play as James makes the first. Coming up on the Intuit TurboTax Halftime Report, we're going to talk a little bit about the NCAA committing ra committee rankings, take a look ahead at what possibly could come in the NCAA tournament, along with the best moments from the first half of action, some of the stats from the first half of what has been an excellent half here inside of Reynolds Coliseum. That's all coming up on the TurboTax Halftime Report. Be sure to stick around under a minute to go. Good defense from the Wolfpack. Did a great job of forcing Blackshear to shoot a contested shot. They're showing a lot of help right now on those drives. So it's a six-point lead for the Yellow Jackets, but Baldwin gets it inside. Beautiful dump down pass from the show, Ms. James. Little miscommunication. James running out, drawing the foul. Head coach Nell Fortner frustrated, understandably. Yeah, I'm not sure if I've ever seen this happen, but 
She threw the ball, then couldn't be the first one to touch it was Blackshear, and then tried to go for the block. And James is smart here because someone could say, why didn't you pull the ball out? But instead, she's like, I'm just going to attack the post player one-on-one -on -one and see if I can make something happen out of nothing. And in that situation, if you're Blackshear or if you're Johnson, you pick up the ball first. Pick up the ball first, tie the shoe later. James coming out just so hot in this first half. 17 points, 7 of 9 from the floor, and a big turnaround from a couple of quiet games by her standards. Five points, went 2 of 11, along with five rebounds, eight steals, and two assists against Pitt. So was able to impact the game in some other ways, but just not her best shooting game necessarily. But still, just been outstanding in this one. It seems to not miss as she gets the friendly roll on the free throw. Also had just 11 points against Notre Dame. Again, a little bit quiet by her standards, that is, these last couple games. But man, she's been red hot here in the first half. Leading all scores with 19. 10 to go here, Morgan with the tough take. Fight for the rebound, Collins has it. Pushing of the pack. James with the last shot and she gets it! <laughs> NC State takes the lead just for 15 plus points and we still have a whole second half to go. Five games with 20 plus, had the first 30 point game of her career against Duke putting up 33. So Isaiah James very likely not done here and neither is this matchup. What a pass. Tough take by Rivers won't go. Well, it was a great play call out of the half to get an easy bucket. It should have been first an alley-oop. The timing was off. And then Rivers is not able to finish the one in, in the paint. Opportunity here for Georgia Tech to retake the lead. Tough spinning shot from Blackshear. Yeah, if you're Blackshear being guarded by Baldwin, he's at 6'5". You gotta move around her and not through her as Madison Hayes gets in on the action. A 46% three-point shooter. Hayes with some time there to take that three. Averages more than 12 points and about six and a half boards per game. Coming off a 16-point outing against Notre Dame in addition to a 16-point outing the prior game against Pitt. Playing really well as of late is done. Misses everything. Pitch ahead pass to James, finishes it off. This is NC State's biggest lead of the game. They're up six now, timeout on the floor. And Coach Westmore clapping it up for his team. The Wolfpack starting the third quarter strong, running and gunning in transition, up six at home. So what is the next big thing? Well, Galaxy believes the next big thing is you. Me? Yes, look at you. You're open to experiment. You open your heart. I have a play this weekend. And with the power of Galaxy AI, you'll open even more possibilities and open your imagination. We're putting all that power in your hands. The next big thing is you. When Barbara switched to TurboTax. I broke four generations of family tradition with five little words. Ma, I want to make perfume. <laughs> Getting my business off the ground was a full-time job. So I made Barbara's new site gig count by guaranteeing 100% accurate filing and a maximum refund. Make your moves. We'll make them count. Intuit TurboTax. 100% accuracy guaranteed. Dad, we're gonna be late. Can't stop adding stuff to your cart? Get the Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Card. Choose the online shopping category and earn 3% cash back. <laughs> Honey. Honey. NyQuil Severe Honey. Powerful cold and flu relief with a dreamy honey taste. NyQuil Honey, the honeylicious nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, fever, best sleep with a cold medicine. Shopping for chunks. Bobby, watch out! The unexpected can happen to any of us. That's why Select Quote makes it easy to get the life insurance coverage you need to protect your family for less than a dollar a day. Now get up to a $2 million term life policy with no medical exam and same day coverage. 
Make sure your family is protected from the unexpected. Visit SelectQuote.com now. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Sixth ranked NC State has scored the last 14 in this ball game, going back to the second quarter, and now they have their largest lead of the game up 47 41. Georgia Tech going to have to figure things out here in third quarters are not their strong suit. Something Coach Fortner said has been an Achilles heel for this group. They're getting outscored by 82 in ACC games, and on the season, it's the only quarter where they're getting outscored. What needs to change right now for the Yellow Jackets? Just the intentionality offensively. Their first few possessions offensively have seem rushed they haven't gotten good shots they've been forcing shots and then defensively making sure they continue to rebound keeping NC State off of the board you want to control this game and trying to win the rebounding battle NC State with a five to one edge in O boards four edge and second chance points three rattles out from Dunn chance in transition here for the pack Rivers finds Collins. Turnaround, tough shot. Touch shot of play. Yellow Jackets ball. That was a good dig by Naredo. I think she made Collins just a little uncomfortable there. And then a four shot from Collins. Thought she could have worked harder to get a better look at the basket. Collins having a bit of a quiet game. Four points, three boards, just one of five from the floor. Mentioned she's coming off a lower body injury, so maybe working on a little bit of working some of the rust off, getting back into the swing of things here. Yeah, John. <laughs> nice pass. But the foul is called going the other direction. Coach Fortner not happy about that one as Dunn gets called for her second. Dunn gets in the lane, she jumps off, and River Baldwin was there. I thought about what Coach Westmore said earlier. He said, well, River Baldwin is our rim protector, but she does it through taking charges. She's not going to block your shot. She's going to get in position, and she's going to accept the contact and draw the charge, exactly what she did there. That's hard to do from a 6'5 center. Hayes can't cash in. Battle for the board. Yellow Jackets come up with it. Pushing in transition here is Morgan. Moreto pulls up, nice pass, Blackshear cashes in. Thought that could have been an and one too, a little bit of contact, but a beautiful pass there by Naredo, and a quick finish from Blackshear. Blackshear now has eight. That shot won't go. Talk about the third quarter disparity, even their win over Clemson. This Georgia Tech team trailed 27-12 in the third quarter. They went into the halftime with the lead and then had to battle back. But here's a takeaway for the pack. Rivers draws the foul. A little slow to get up there on the other end is Inez Naredo, sophomore guard, native of Spain, coming off the second double-double of the season against Clemson. And Naredo tried to get back, tried to take the charge. And was still moving, and she's holding the back of her head. Good to see her up, though. Glad she's okay. Naredo, an important piece of this team. We talk about a number of players scoring this game. Not one who's been super active in terms of point production. Just three points so far. One of four from the field. One of two from three-point land, along with three boards. CW Courtside Saturday returns this week with another epic doubleheader. First, Virginia Tech heads to the Steel City to take on Pitt. Then in primetime, Florida State looks for the upset against tournament hopeful Clemson. CW Courtside Saturday this week at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 p.m. Pacific, only on the CW. Lots of ACC action, and this time of year, man, so much fun to watch. Doesn't get any better as... Anyone can do anything when it comes to the postseason, so we want to be playing hot and winning ball games right now. Five-point ball game here in Reynolds Coliseum. Augusta Naite offline. A rare miss for her from beyond the arc. Rivers. Calling her own number is James. Couldn't get the roll. Maybe a little bit of a heat check after the way she's been playing. 
Foul called, though, on the floor as both teams battled for the rebounds. The Goose Denida gets called for her second. Yeah, great activity on the weak side boards by Madison Hayes. That's the sixth offensive rebound for the Wolfpack. Great teams when they offensive rebound, the mentality is you expect a miss. Whether you think your teammates are the best shooters in the world, you expect a miss and you crash the boards every single time, and that's what the Wolfpack do. Hayes here going to the line. Player we pointed out in the open has been great, has just five points in this ball game. Senior guard out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, also transferred in from Mississippi State after her freshman season, where she was an SEC all-freshman selection. And here's some full court pressure from the Wolfpack. I like that decision from the Wolfpack just to put a little bit of pressure on Georgia Tech, but you attack pressure with pressure. Good cut by Blackshear, good find by Dunn. Blackshear now in double figures. She has 10, five of eight from the floor. Trying for the entry pass, denied. Out and running is Morgan. And there's the finish. Transition bucket for the Yellow Jackets. And I thought that they could steal a bit more points in the fast break opportunities. And when Tony Morgan gets a steal in that middle of the third area of the court, she is most certainly attacking in transition. This packed team with 18 points of their own in transition. James can't get the roll again. And there's the putback opportunity. It is so hard to rebound out of a zone. Georgia Tech has been in a zone for the last few possessions, so you're not matched up man-to-man, -man, but they have got to find a way to at least put a body on Madison Hayes. Hayes now with eight points, right? As I was saying, she's been a little bit quiet in this game. She's come to life. Morgan gets the roll. Good screen there by the freshman and Termis that's checked in. The 6-6 freshman playing big minutes right now in the third quarter. Morgan now in double digits. She has 11. Baldwin, the O-board. Bad pass, though. Morgan with the takeaway. Tries to get it off to Blackshear. Out of play, NC State basketball. Some frustration there, as you pointed out. Got to be able to capitalize in transition. Two-point ball game, NC State on top. We are Ram, and when trucks are what you do, you do truck month better than anyone else. You do trucks that work harder and play harder. And you do trucks that win by breaking every rule of what a truck should be. So this truck month, what you should do is drive a Ram. Trucks are what we do. Get 10% below MSRP for an average of 8,400 under MSRP on the purchase of select 2024 Ram light duty and heavy duty trucks. Sometimes Jonah wrestles with falling asleep, so he takes ZQL, the world's number one sleep aid brand, and wakes up feeling like himself. Get the rest to be your best with non habit forming ZQL. Better days start with ZQL nights. Dad, we're gonna be late. Mm. Can't stop adding stuff to your cart? Get the Bank of America customized cash rewards card. Choose the online shopping category and earn 3% cash back. Shopify helps you sell at every stage of your business. Like that ready to launch stage. That open for business stage. That sell it everywhere until you sell out stage. That count it up, ship it out stage. And that, wait, did we just hit a million orders stage? Whatever the stage, businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Businesses go further with 5G solutions. That's why they choose T-Mobile for business. PGA of America and T-Mobile are partnering on 5G-powered analytics to help improve player performance. T-Mobile's network helps AAA stay connected nationwide to get their members back on the road. And Las Vegas Grand Prix chose T-Mobile to help fuel operations for one of the world's largest racing events. Now is the time to see what America's largest 5G network can do for your business. We talk forever about the future, worry about it, or wish it closer. We try to glimpse the places we'll go, from ocean depths to the far side of the moon. At NC State University, the future is a thing you make, with bright ideas, new tools, and a wolf pack behind you. Tell us where you're headed. We'll help you get there. NC State. Think and do. 
ACC Basketball on the CW is brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Welcome back inside of Reynolds Coliseum, NC State holding the two-point lead late in quarter number three. And you just pointed out, Isis, the points in the paint disparity, getting paint touches so important for any offense to be able to spread the floor, but what's been working for Georgia Tech? I just thought they've been cutting to the basket well, and they've also gotten a couple of points in transition. And again, when you can get steals, then your offense leads to your, excuse me, your defense leads to your offense. That is how this team would like to play. They pick up a foul, though, unfortunately, on the baseline. All of Georgia Tech's points in the third quarter have come from the paint. That's a good stat, John. Thanks so much for that. Shout out to John getting it done, and now there is a foul, though, on the Yellow Jackets. It's a goose denied a ball out of play here right in front of us. I hope you were ready to hold that off. Yeah, well, it was off, it was off someone's head. It was off Termas head, and so referee, yeah, hey, look, Wes Moore had it. <laughs> I saw that, but yeah, ball was thrown in, and it just, like, just touched Termas' head. Yep. Looked like it was the ponytail. Yeah, yep. Might have knocked, knocked the bun off a little bit. Baldwin with a sweet touch. Like you mentioned, just really good touch around the basket. She's always moving, too. One of those post players that's constantly relocating, constantly trying to find an angle and make herself available for the ball. Baldwin so efficient, eight points, shooting more than 57% from the floor on the season. Four or five today so far. Naredo with a sweet touch of her own. Beautiful pull-up jump shot. I tell you what, you can tell Georgia Tech works on their mid-range jumpers. A lot of coaches think it's the worst shot in the game of basketball. But if you can make layups and threes, then why can't you find a way to make shots within the mid-range? And Georgia Tech has just shown off that ability today. Laredo getting it done that time. She has five now. Corner three offline. Two-point ball game here. Georgia Tech with a chance to tie or take the lead on this possession. With under four to go here in the third. That one will go out of play, but it will stay with the Yellow Jackets. I'd like to see Tony Morgan get some touches getting downhill, whether it's off a handoff or maybe a ball screen, but she's so good for this team when she can get downhill. Oh, Dunn knocks down the corner tray. Off of what? Tony Morgan getting downhill, get a piece of the paint. She attracts so much attention. You have to guard her with multiple players because she is so athletic at getting by you, especially one-on-one. -on -one. How about Dunn, though, knocking down shots from the outside? Her fourth triple of the night. Afternoon, excuse me. She has 20 now. As Rivers gets through traffic, can't get the finish. They won really impressed by this young Georgia Tech team, the way they weathered that storm in the third quarter. NC State came out strong, momentum on their home court, built a lead of six, but the Yellow Jackets have had a response. Actually, trying to find the pass. Nice cut, and the shot goes from Naredo. Beautiful cut by Naredo. She wanted the handoff, saw that Brooks was denying that, and then went back door. 7-0 run here for the Yellow Jackets. Another miss for the pack. Yeah, that's three empty trips in a row for the pack. And Georgia Tech rebounding, forcing them to be one and done. And he's going to say, during this stretch right now, who's not on the court? Isaiah James. And can you see the difference now in what NC State looks like without James on the floor? Huge impact. Morgan can't get it to go. On the drive kick out, Rivers rises up, no. Out of play, Georgia Tech ball. Four empty trips in a row, a lot of contested jump shots. And then the Yellow Jackets doing a good job of boxing out and rebounding. 245 scoring drought, NC State mentioned it, one of the best rebounding teams in the country. Still does have the edge, 23-19, but Georgia Tech battling here these last couple possessions. 
The pack though, the eight to one edge and old board certainly gonna be an area of concern for Coach Fortner. Naredo, nice pass. Oh, what a dish. Man, Naredo showing us a little bit of what she can do. She's had some assists. She's also pulled up and knocked down some shots, but just a good movement off the ball. And NC State that time was slow on their rotation weak side. 3-2 strong, ninth O board of the game for NC State. Spinning is Hayes, can't get the roll. Battle, look at the battle on the boards. You can tell every Yellow Jacket now trying to make sure that they get in the mix and rebound. Morgan pulls it back out. And running their offense. You know, that's something to think about as well as we talked a couple of times about Georgia Tech shooting the ball late in the shot clock. But what it forces is NC State to play defense for 20, 25 seconds. That will wear a team out. Yellow Jackets fighting for the O board. They'll keep it as it goes out of play. Rather here on the weak side, watch Blackshear just continue to roll, and then Brooks was late on the rotation. Bit of a freshman mistake as the Yellow Jackets make them pay, but pay attention to the clock here. Only 2.9 seconds on the shot clock. Blackshear for three, no. Reverse the rebound. Just about a four second differential here between the game clock and shot clock. Georgia Tech up five. Wolfpack looking to close the gap. James. Brooks. Oof. Tough shot. Gets the roll. Two to shoot. Dunn pulls up. Comes up short. Valiant effort, but it's the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets who still hold on to the lead at the end of three. 58-55. That third quarter, though, a back and forth. Back. Talk about fast-paced basketball. Ooh. Athletic guards. It was a track meet in there, Kyle. And I was like, whoa, whoa, I don't know this sport. Hold on. They're just running and shooting right now. Oh, that one was fun to watch. Hard to call, though, because it was almost <laughs> difficult to keep up with the action because it was transition, 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 run, run, run. Foul called, though, here on the floor. That one's going to go against Zion James. That's her second. So far, neither team dealing with any major foul trouble. Something to note. No one has three fouls yet here as quarter number four gets underway. Travel called. Dunn got hung up a little bit. Yeah, we've talked about Isaiah James in terms of her offensive production, but she's also a very good defender, normally known for drawing fouls, but she does a great job of staying in front, and she forced the travel on Dunn. This Wolfpack defense going to have to lock down in the final stretch. Her steal can't get the three. Morgan off and running. Pulls up. Calls her own number and knocks it down. Yeah, that's money for Tony Morgan. If you don't know it by now, you have to know the scout. That is money. She she loves a 15-foot jump shot, a pull-up in transition. It's going to go down for every time. Oh, and there's another jump shot. That one from Madison Hayes. Yeah, you're thinking about NC State right now, though, as the crowd gets into it, because they're aware it's the fourth quarter and they've got to find a way to find a strength defensively. We talked to Wes Moore about the big win they had their last game against Notre Dame, holding the 16-team Irish to just 43 points in that game. But here today, they have not been able to stop Georgia Tech. They've knocked down threes. They have eight of them in this game. They're also shooting 59% from the field. I remember when it was four minutes left in the first quarter, and we were talking about they're 7-7. Seven seven. And we said in the break, I was like, well, it's going to cool down eventually. I was wrong. It has not cooled down. NC State has to do something different defensively to get this game to change. Well, a big reason why is Georgia Tech has been scoring in a number of different ways, and when you knock down the three ball, you force them to guard you outside. We just saw in this last possession, Morgan's able to get to the cup because you play her too hard out in the perimeter. She can use that quick first step. Now, for NC State, they got to do something different. What is it? If you're Westmore right now. Yeah, I'm thinking about mixing up ball screen coverage. If, if you're looking at Tony Morgan, and just right now, she's got a double-double, folks. 14 points, 10 assists. She's also got six rebounds on triple-double watch. But I'm thinking when she's coming off a ball screen, trap her, double her, get the ball out of her hands, and make her more of a passer. As Hayes gets the and one, fired up is Madison Hayes. 
Hayes closing the gap. NC State trailing by two with a chance to make it one at the free throw line. Off the jab step, she attacked the 6-6 Termis and got the finish inside. Dorado is there, hit the deck, gets called for her second. And that's where the youth for Nor Nell Fortner is, where you can see it a little bit. Naredo on that one just has to let it go, right? Nell Fortner told us, I can get, I can't get the foul back, but I can get the two points back. We can work to get that back. Yeah, absolutely. Morgan dealing with a little foul trouble. Had a quiet game against Clemson because she got two early in that game. And for her to have this type of production, she's got to be on the floor. Can't take herself out of the game. <laughs> oh, what a move. Blackshear denied. Ball out of play. How about this dribble, though, from Tony Morgan off the bounce? And then the recovery. James, that is James. She went for the block and on the way down, went with another hand and then got the deflection. Just beautiful defensive awareness from James. I've been so impressed with watching her play. I mean, again, right, we're talking about top 10 team in the country. So you know they have the best players in the country, but Zaya James is just different, folks. James, an all-ACC freshman team selection now in her junior season. You can see how well she reads the game. That three is offline. Pointed out she played a full 40 minutes in three of the last four games, and a big reason why is because what she does on both ends of the floor, you look at the scoring, you automatically point to that, but she also is a great defender. Yeah, you think about watching just ACC basketball across and the guards. What I love about the guards in the ACC is they are two-way players. Hannah Hildago from Notre yep. Dame gets yep. down and plays defense. We talk about Tania Latson from FSU gets down and plays defense. Tony Morgan from Georgia Tech plays defense. You can't just score the basketball in the ACC. You also got to defend some of the best players in the country. That's what makes it so hard. Done, by the way, with three fouls, so she'll have to be a little more careful here. Black shear, too strong from the top of the key. That's not the shot they want. Black shear in 15, 17 foot is different than her shooting a three. Baseline jumper won't go. Second try falls for James. 26 for James. And the Coliseum is on his feet. This place is rocking. Tie ball game at 61 apiece, the fifth tie of this matchup. Just over seven minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Time for some clutch basketball. Extra pass. Three ball won't go. James off and running. James goes in herself. Foul called. Waved off. Foul is called on James. That's going to be her third. So we look back to a couple plays ago where we saw Naredo trying to slide in and take a charge, and she got called for the block. This time she gets her feet set, but where I would like to challenge Isaiah James, one of the best guards in the country, is to know the scout. You know that Naredo likes to take the charge. So can you give an up fake? Can you step through? Can you finish around her? Because you know that that's how she wants to play defense in the half court. You gotta admire the aggression from Isaiah James to go up with that with two defenders in front of her, but you also have to be smart about how you do it. KYP, Morgan, denied inside. Blackshear with a second chance opportunity. That is a huge bucket for Kayla Blackshear. I'm telling you guys, just every time Georgia Tech has had a response. Blackshear with 14, giving the Yellow Jackets a two-point lead. 7 of 13 from the floor, has taken two threes. Interesting to see her firing from beyond the arc. She's only made two on the season. That one taken away. Yeah, good defense from Dunn. She read the drift pass off the baseline perfectly. Morgan pulling it back out, getting some direction from Coach Fortner. Nine to shoot. Done from beyond the arc. Yes! Wow. Wow. Come on, Georgia Tech. Number 16, number six team on the road. Five-point ball game and a five-point lead for the Yellow Jackets. Crowd got real quiet after that last three. My goodness, from how rocking it was just a minute prior.
You can hear a pin drop in here after that one fell. Oh, Kara Dunn has just been exceptional today. Five of seven from three. And who else but Tony Morgan with another assist? That's 11 for her. And Dunn going to get a well-deserved breather. She also picked up her fourth foul. But with five minutes left to go, it's not much of a concern. I think Nell Ford is going to give her about a minute rest and then get her back in this game to see if they can finish strong. Baldwin denied. Collins with a second chance and one. Amy Collins has been quiet today, but now would be a great time for her to start to show her dominance inside off the offensive rebound. They forgot to box her out, and she'll make you pay every time. The and one for Collins. Collins averaging 11 and a half points, nearly six and a half boards per game, but even more production in ACC games, averaging more than 13. Starting to get up closer to that average, and she now has seven. Two-point ball game here. Crowd on its feet. Morgan. Wasn't going to go up on Baldwin there. Blackshear. They find jumper offline. It was good defense by Baldwin to show a hand to Morgan so she wouldn't get into a pull-up jump shot. Yeah, Baldwin, 6'5 center. Tough, tough defender to run into with a hand in the face. Baldwin on the other end. Push called from behind. Some frustration there from Aisha Adonis. Two-point ball game here. This one coming down to the wire. Don't go anywhere. Imagine your child going to school without a decent pair of shoes and socks or a warm coat to protect them from the cold. Many families across the country struggle to be able to provide these basic needs for their children. Subaru wants to help by giving these critical items to more than 150,000 children in urgent need this year. Subaru, more than a car company. Life doesn't stop for a cold. <laughs> honey. Daycool Severe Honey. Powerful cold and flu symptom relief with a honeylicious taste. Dayquil Honey, the honeylicious daytime coughing, aching, stuffy head fever, power through your day, medicine. Ever since I tried Hidden Valley Ranch, I finally found what I've been looking for. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I know. How is this stuff so good? Hidden Valley Ranch. Only serious about flavor. My name's Cody Archie. And I'm Erica. And we're first generation ranchers from Central Texas. And because of TikTok, we're able to show people from all over the world where their food and fiber come from. We have Dorper sheep and we have beef cattle for the sole purpose of going into the food chain. We use TikTok as a tool to inform people of what we do and why we do it. There's just a plethora of knowledge and of information swapping going on there. TikTok is helping us protect this way of life for future generations. Having health insurance is important. So if anyone in your family has Medicaid or CHIP, listen up. Check the mail for your renewal form. Complete the form. And mail it back right away, so you don't lose your coverage. If you do lose your coverage, visit healthcare.gov to see if you're eligible to enroll in a low-cost, quality health plan. Healthcare.gov. The confidence to compete. The creativity to adapt. The inspiration to innovate. Georgia Tech ignites passion and possibility. Be so bold. ACC basketball and the CW is brought to you by Walmart. We don't just have everything, we have your thing. Check out the renovated facilities that NC State has. That's a sleeping pod that River Baldwin is sitting in right there. We got to check it out. Very cool. All renovated locker rooms. They had water massage chairs, which is pretty awesome. Here's the Walmart game summary, though, and it's been a three-point shooting for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets that's really kept them in this game. Nine of 18 from beyond the arc. And you pointed out, too, they weathered the third-quarter storm and won that third quarter. Huge, 
huge for the Yellow Jackets, especially on the road. Just thought that they showed so much composure and maturity is the word that comes to mind. Now, Fortner talked to us about this young squad, the majority of the squad, sophomores and freshmen, but they're on the road versus a very good top 10 team. And it's a tie ball game and they've got the ball. Under five to play. This is what it's all about in February ACC Women's Hoops. Fourth quarter underway. Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets looking for their first top 10 win since December of 2021. Morgan, whistle blows, foul called. Now, I had thought about this earlier before our break when Morgan was going to pull up in front of River Baldwin and she didn't want to shoot the ball because Baldwin is a post player and she'll block her shot. But against a guard that is trying to recover off of the screen, you can draw that. I think it was a good opportunity for her to pull up and shoot that. Hayes called for the foul. She knocks down the first free throw. Should mention, by the way, NC State is in the bonus. Next foul, Georgia Tech will be in the bonus as well. Four twenty to go. NC State now trailing by two. Rivers pulling it back out. Eight to shoot now. Hayes. Collins tries it from the baseline. Got it. Big shot from Mimi Collins. Tie ball game. Fans on their feet. This is fun. Morgan. Augustinida coming off the screen. Deflection takeaway. Rivers finds James. Draws the foul. Big defensive play, though, by NC State and big transition opportunity. Well, NC State just so long. It was Rivers that got the deflection, and then James getting out in transition. And when the two of them can combine in the open court, it is fun basketball to watch. Augustinina called for her third. Just 325 remaining. Maybe not a huge concern. James at the free throw line knocks it down a 73 and a half about percent free throw shooter. And this is the first NC State lead in the fourth quarter. So big for them to take it at this point in the game. Can they carry this momentum down the stretch? Seven ties, five lead changes in this ball game. If you're Georgia Tech right now, you got to stay composed. Run your offense. Continue to go at the actions that have worked for you. Morgan. Calls her own number, does it again. Tony Morgan. Unstoppable, 18 points, 50% from the field. You can't let her get into her pull-up. I mean, her pull-up is her bread and butter. Hayes tries to respond. Battle for the rebound, touched out of play. Crowd booing, it's called Georgia Tech basketball. Tony Morgan so good coming off a ball screen here. Hayes goes over the screen and then gets just that little bit of pivot, that little stop and pause to get some separation to knock it down. That is beautiful. Mind you folks, she's only a sophomore. Morgan with the arc on that shot, able to get it up over the hands. Just incredible to watch. Oh, I mean, she's had the ball here down the stretch for yellow for the yellow jackets and the step through and one. Kylan! We're about to fall out of our seats here courtside because Tony Morgan is putting on a show down the stretch, 20 points now. And the step through, the left hand finish through contact. Super sophomore is what we call Tony Morgan. Morgan with a double-double, 11 assists, 20 points. Now at the free throw line, six rebounds. She makes that one. Tony Morgan only played 18 minutes and 38 seconds in her last game because of foul trouble. But here she's made every minute count. Hayes draws the foul. 
Morgan has 10 points in this fourth quarter. Talk about coming alive in the clutch. Uh, like I said, calling her own number, you point out that pull up. Man, it's just special to watch. A luxury for Nell Fortner where he can say, give the ball to Tony Morgan, set a screen, and get out the way. Moreto called for the foul on the other end. Free throw doesn't go for Hayes. Free throw shooting so important here down the stretch of a close game. Hayes a 75% free throw shooter, so not often, or at least too often that she misses. Makes the second. Well, that's been one of the disparities in this game in which NC State has the clear advantage. They've knocked down 16 free throws and Georgia Tech just four. NC State, a pretty good free throw shooting team, more than 74%, sixth in the ACC coming into this game. They're fourth in the conference as well as free throw attempts, third in free throw makes because they do have players who can draw the contact or good at getting to the line. Now, can they take advantage of it down the stretch, both these teams in the bonus with this big a two point ball game? Yeah, here at Georgia Tech, you continue to go with what has worked. I mean, when you give the ball to Tony Morgan and she's able to get a piece of the paint, whether she's scoring or whether she's facilitating, she's been dynamic. Kara Dunn still has 23 points, Blackshear 14, and then Augusta Knight, her eight has made a difference off of the bench, and then Naredo with seven, but it's just been a balanced scoring attack, and this is something we haven't seen a lot from Georgia Tech right now. Fortner told us, hey, some days we'll get two out of our five that are on the same track. Some days we'll get three, but today they've gotten a full five and on the road versus the number six team in the country, it has been a very good showing for the Yellow Jackets. Next Sunday, it's the season finale of CW Women's Hoops as the Cavaliers head to Louisville looking for the upset as they face the powerful Cardinals. Virginia taking on 18th ranked Louisville next Sunday at 12 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Pacific, only on the CW. So this season, not over yet. Plenty of action to come in the postseason in ACC women's hoops and still a critical last 224 remaining in this ballgame between Georgia Tech and NC State. Coach Fortner pointed out last year a very young group. You look at all these sophomores who were impact players, freshmen last year. They've been a lot of growing pains for this Yellow Jackets team. She said at ACC Media Day starting out the year that was one of the most challenging of her long coaching career. But now they're starting to see the fruits of their labor. So many of these players have gotten so much better maturity coming through gameplay. Well, let's also not forget to tell you how well coached they are. Nell Ford, they're one of the best in the business, folks. Rado can't get the three. Battle for the rebound. Both these teams so aggressive on the glass down the stretch. Yeah, great job by River Baldwin there just to pull that one out. That's what you need at the end of games. You need an enforcer in the paint to be strong on the rebounds. Less than two to go. Rivers running the point here for NC State. James. Too strong. Rivers. Baldwin almost came up with the board there. How about the box out though from Moreta? I mean, boxing out the 6-5. Baldwin takes a bit of strength. That it does. Under a minute and a half to play. NC State now in a zone, which they haven't been in the fourth quarter. They have been guarding man, but they couldn't find a way to stop Tony Morgan, so now they're packing the paint. With the nine threes this Georgia Tech team made, they couldn't go to one earlier. Last chance. Naredo throws it up towards the basket, misses everything. Shot clock violation. Good decision defensively by Wes Moore and going into that zone, just making Georgia Tech think about something. They haven't had to play against zone during the course of this game, and it results in a shot clock violation. NC State has not scored in the last 247. Had a couple free throws, but haven't scored a field goal. Under a minute to play, trailing by two. Baldwin, turnaround, got it! Tie ball game! Some disparity on the floor here. Conversations happening. Once again, officiating crew. Fatu, Sissoko, Stevens, Brian Brunette, Timothy Bryant. Taking another look here. Love the high percentage look here. Give it to River Baldwin in the post. Look at that right hand hook shot. Beautiful touch. 
the official review is they're taking a look at the clock is the word that we're being told both coaches using this time to take advantage or taking advantage of this time using this to talk to their players try to figure out what they want to execute down the stretch here they're going to add point seven to the clock so seven tenths of a second In a game like this every single tenth of a second counts oh absolutely and here just Going to be important for Georgia Tech to get a shot up. And I literally mean get a shot up. They cannot afford to turn the ball over at this point in the game. About a 15-second difference between the game clock and shot clock. Baseline jumper rattles out. Crowd fired up. Good defense there from the pack. And that's a decent shot for Blackshear. She can make that. Westmore not electing to take a time out here. Blackshear with 14. Oh. A lot of them have come in the mid-range. Now he is going to call the timeout, right, as you were pointing it out. He doesn't often do it, but more. Calls it with 14.6 remaining. This game all tied up at 73 apiece. NC State with the basketball. What are you calling here? You need two options. You need one for a punch option, a post touch. I would give River Baldwin the ball. She just had it. She's made two back-to-back -back really good moves. Find a way to get her the ball on the block. But you also need to have Isaiah James getting open somewhere else, whether it's off of a staggered, whether it's off of maybe a flare screen. But you need to have multiple options here. I would hit the post touch, and then I would also hit James on a chance. But then obviously, if you're NC State 2, crashing the offensive boards. You've got 14.6 seconds left. So if you get a shot up with two or three seconds, it might give you an opportunity to offensive rebound. NC State with 12 O boards in this matchup. Georgia Tech just three. So a big area they've been able to take advantage of, leading to the 12 2 edge in second chance points. Isaiah James, one basket away from her second 30 point outing of the season. Just talk about the growth from year to year, playing in almost every minute of the last several games. Could the ball end up in her hands here in the final seconds? Baldwin, though, also the 6'5 graduate student center, brings in a ton of experience. When you look at being a graduate student, you can see the way she reads the game, the high IQ, makes good decisions. If you're Georgia Tech here defensively, you have to communicate at a high level right now. If the plan is to switch everything, then you switch everything, but you have to communicate. There's going to be a lot of screens set here in this box option. 1.6 second differential between the game clock and shot clock. James goes up, no. Second chance and one. Sanaya Rivers, are you serious? NC State takes the lead with 2.5 to go. Sanaya Rivers, what I say, crash the offensive board. You expect a miss. They forgot to box her out and she finishes through contact. The junior in the air. Man, that's so good. Foul called on Tony Morgan. Rivers going to the line with a chance to make it a three point lead with four seconds remaining. She buries it. Rivers, too, so smart on that offensive board, just put it right back up. Just throw it back up, no hesitation. You can't afford to hesitate in that situation. Slipped in there on that weak side. It's a three-point lead here. Rivers just so athletic, so heady. The junior, her and James have been so good here today, but it has been Isaiah James who gets our player of the game. 28 points, seven rebounds, 10 of 18 from the field, just extremely efficient, picking her spots well. They call her the show, and I hope you got to see every bit of it today. She's been constant for them down the stretch. That's our player of the game, brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. But man, the thing about this NC State team is they have a multitude of scores. It's not just James. Tania Rivers getting it done, coming off her third double-double of the season at 10 points, 10 boards against Notre Dame. He's named to the Naismith Trophy mid-season list not long ago.
Another timeout called, so another opportunity for NC State to try to iron out what they are going to execute on the defensive side of the ball with 4.2 remaining. And now here at Georgia Tech, where are you going? Yeah, and here's where NC State, if you're studying the scout, if they've had a close game throughout the season, you've seen them set up in that set, then you're trying to anticipate where they're going. And so Westmore calls another timeout to get his defense set. But if you're if you're Georgia Tech here, I would love to see Tony Morgan get the ball, create a little bit of havoc, and then find a shooter quickly. Obviously, they haven't had a problem in knocking down threes today. Nine of 20 are the Yellow Jackets, but they need a three, and probably it's going to be Kara Dunn. She shot it the best here today. Two and a half minute scoring drought for Georgia Tech. Can the Yellow Jackets find a last shot? Ball in play. Two to go. Done. It's it. Are you kidding me? Tie ball game. 76 apiece. A last second three ball. No for Five minutes coming up here from Reynolds Coliseum. Will that be enough to decide the victor between these two teams? Because, man, they have been going back and forth, toe-to-toe -to -toe throughout this ballgame. And it's the Yellow Jackets that will get the first possession in OT. Now, overtime is critical. Every possession, every play, every cut, every screen, it counts. There's a nice cut. Ball mishandled, but Naredo gets it up. Baldwin the board. Georgia Tech team putting up 76 points in regulation against a North Carolina State defense holding teams to under 59 per game and 34.5% shooting. Rivers goes herself to the cup. We talked all game about Isaiah James, but don't forget about Sanaya Rivers. Obviously, gave North Carolina, NC State the lead, and then they're just getting to the basket in the steal. Those long arms, deceptive. Nice pass. Cashing in on the other end, NC State capitalizes in transition. Rivers, though, doing the work defensively and then making the right play, distributing that one to the weak side to James. Go back to what I said towards the end of the fourth quarter, taking care of the basketball. You can't afford to turn it over at this point in the game. And Dunn, what she's so good at doing is drawing fouls. Dunn getting in the lane, doing exactly that. James, by the way, gets the 30-piece in OT. Beautiful take there by Rivers, uses the inside hand. And then here, she's so long. I mean, I think Agus Snyder thought it was open, and then she quickly closed the gap, and James runs the floor. Here's Dunn at the free throw line, knocks down the first. Also, keep an eye on the fouls as well. Dunn does have four. So that could be a factor here in this overtime period. She's the only player in the game with four. Down. Hits the second free throw. Think about defense right now for Georgia Tech. My mindset would be to protect the paint at all costs. If you allow them to get into the paint is where they cause havoc. They've only knocked down three threes. Contest a shot, but force them to shoot contested jump shots. Baldwin gets it in. Four-point lead for NC State. She's so good one-on-one. One-on-one -on -one in the post. She's got quick moves, strong moves, and she's long. Done. Too strong from the elbow. O-board by the Yellow Jackets. Deflection. Morgan. Moreto rattles out. NC State all over the glass. They can take their time now. Sanaya, yeah, Rivers says, yep. Let's relax, let's relax, take your time. Use the clock to your advantage. Four-point lead here for NC State. They are 1-0 this season in overtime. Georgia Tech has yet to play an OT game. So getting that experience for some of these young sophomores here. Baldwin <laughs> finishes it off. She has 16, the last two for NC State. And she's fired up, rightfully so. Over the ball with the graduate student center of Andalusia, Alabama, transferred in from Florida State. Three seasons there. Again, so good, one-on-one. -on -one. Can go to her left, got the angle, and then on the other side. Now she takes two dribbles and goes left again, scoring so great off of that right shoulder. And I love... 
that Coach Moore decided to go to her, right? You go with what works. She's had great advantage inside. She's got great moves inside. And for Georgia Tech, you got to start to think about, do you want to double the post? I thought that in that last possession, Tony Morgan could have helped a little bit more to try and get the ball out of River Baldwin's hands. But if you leave her one-on-one -on -one in the post at 6'5", she is the biggest, strongest player on the court. She's got an advantage. NC State shooting just 16% from beyond the arc as well in this game. You'd think they could afford to let someone sag off a little bit. River Baldwin, though, really starting to hit her stride. She dealt with a pretty serious ankle injury, according to Coach Moore. She missed a number of games in mid-January, starting to really hit her stride again after dealing with that injury that disrupted her rhythm. 14 points, 10 boards in 37 minutes against Notre Dame, her fourth double-double of the season. Had 15 points, seven boards, three blocks against Pitt. So coming off of a couple of strong performances, really can see her confidence and composure down the stretch here. Now you start thinking about overtime and amongst all the things that have happened in the game, you just think about that maturity level, right? NC State, the older team, the more mature team, and so they've handled overtime a bit better. Georgia Tech here trying to calm themselves down, get back to what was working. Yeah, to your point about the NC State experience, you look at their starters, all upperclassmen, two graduate students, a senior and two juniors, certainly they have the edge in experience compared to a young Georgia Tech team. And a look at their tournament profile in terms of how they'd stack up. If the NCAA tournament were to start now or the season were to end today, they've got a top 16 ranking, 10th in the net, 7-3 and three record against quad one teams, which is crucial. Now, can they close out a tough schedule here down the stretch? Because that's one thing about the ACC is that it's a gauntlet. Every single game is they're seeing in this one. They face North Carolina to Syracuse. That's their next three. Now, the good thing is they have Syracuse at home, and something that Coach Moore pointed out is that these are all games that are being played in this area. They're not long road trips. They're being played all in North Carolina. Yeah, they said longest one is 30-minute drive to the next destination, but you mentioned that is a tough schedule, but they got to take care of business right now. I mean, two and a half minutes left, and if what we've seen out of Georgia Tech today holds true, they will have a response. See what they come up with here out of that timeout. Trailing by six here with two and a half to go. Morgan, she can't miss. You let her get to her pull-up. If you let her get to her pull-up, Kylan, Every time. she is going to score the basketball. 23 now for Tony Morgan. To go with the 11 assists and six boards, she's doing a little bit of everything. NC State still doesn't want to rush it here. Up by four with two to go. Hayes gets inside through traffic. Oh, tough take. Madison Hayes slicing through the lane. And at this point now, Yellow Jackets got to go a little bit. You got to get good shots, under rhythm, under control. Morgan couldn't get it that time. Old board foul called as Blackshear tried to put it right back up. Well, that's incredible rebound by Blackshear. That was over Baldwin and Collins on that side. She's able to pull it down. Now she's got to make free throws. Baldwin called for her second. Critical free throws here for this Georgia Tech team trailing by six. I want to mention as well, Hayes, who got that last bucket, 15 points, 11 rebounds, so she's in double-double territory. That would be her third on the season. Or that is her third on the season, rather. Lockshear hits the free throw. We've seen a ton of great individual performances today. Kara Dunn is also on a 30-point watch. She's got 28. One and a half to go. Rivers. James. Tough shot. Very tough. Very tough. I thought they could have worked to get a little bit better of a look there. Done. Black Shear able to get it under control. 
eight to shoot. Dunn almost has it batted away. Throws it up and it goes in. What a heave. 45 to go and somehow the bank is open. Kara Dunn, I don't know what she ate today, but I, I need to know. She is on a different level today, folks. 31. One point ball game. 30 to go in overtime. Rivers finds Baldwin, immediately tripled. Three pointer from Collins, too strong. 12 to go, big opportunity here for the Yellow Jackets. Morgan in traffic. Naredo passes it off. Morgan misses everything. There's the buzzer. NC State closes it out. A one-point victory over Georgia Tech in overtime. The sixth-ranked North Carolina.